No one eats the cookies. You will eat great Kung Pao chicken today. Oh, yeah. It's a good fortune cookie. Hey everybody, my name's Steve Chu, chef and co-owner of Ekiban in Baltimore. And today we are going to be making arguably the most popular Szechuan dish in America right now, which is Kung Pao chicken. It's had a history in America for hundreds of years and it's woven itself into the fabric of American cuisine. So we have chicken thigh meat right here, uh, boneless, skinless. You can either trim the fat off or keep it on. It's totally up to you. It depends on your clientele. It depends on who you're serving. I'm gonna keep it on because the fat is flavor. We're gonna cut this chicken in about like half, yeah, like half inch cubes with a lot of like Chinese knife cuts. What you want is something that's easily picked up with chopsticks. So Kung Pao chicken or originated in the Sichuan province. The literal translation is Palace Guardian chicken pieces. Gong Bao Ji Ding. Traditionally, this dish is made with chilies, peanuts, soy sauce. Sometimes there are veggies, sometimes there are no veggies. This particular recipe is actually uh, the way my, my grandpa really loves it, and it has no veggies, just extra peanuts, extra chili, and like just extra deliciousness. We're going to do this process called velveting. And what velveting does is it helps trap the moisture inside the protein. So make sure we just add egg white. Don't add the egg yolk, please. So what the egg white will do is uh, keep the chicken soft, and that's actually what helps hold all the moisture in the chicken. Don't get lazy with this step. Like really just get in there for a little longer than you think you need to. Next step is the cornstarch, and the egg white helps bind the cornstarch to the chicken. So the step is called velveting because it tenderizes the meat and it has this really nice velvety texture in your mouth. If you've gone to a Chinese restaurant and you've had like beef and broccoli, those little slivers of beef, and they're super tender, that's because it's gone through the velveting process. Now we're gonna season, right? Some salt. So salt and pepper, uh, I'm using white pepper, but you can use black pepper if you want, if you don't have white pepper. And then, you know, next time you're at the grocery store, you can shoplift a little white pepper if you're struggling, and then, you know, use that. Don't shoplift, you could, don't do that, that's illegal. So we're gonna add oil <laughs> into this. And what the oil does is when we fry it, the first step, it'll prevent the chicken from forming clumps. It'll be a little easier to separate. We're gonna get a guy that, that looks like this, a little thin, coating of batter, like super thin, and oil all around. Now we're gonna throw this in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes to allow the velveting to kind of take some time. So traditionally, in an American Chinese restaurant, we'll use long grain rice. Long grain rice is used because it's just absolutely amazing. Some people like short grain rice, like Eric Z, but you know, whatever, long grain rice is, is the move. So we got one cup of rice, bam. That was aggressive. What the washing does is it gets rid of some of that starch. So when it cooks, you can have like these really perfect individual grains of rice. Rice is really fucking easy. One part rice, so one part water. So whatever container you have, just, just do equal parts. Put the lid on, hit that button, and that's it. Like, if you don't have a rice cooker at home, you should get a rice cooker. I don't I don't know why people are cooking rice in pots, man. That's a struggle. You see how easy that was? Wash, water, button, now we're done. Now we're gonna go make some Kung Pao chicken. What we're gonna do is this process called guo yo, which means passing through hot oil. I know this looks like we're deep frying something. We're actually not. This is very high heat, like 375. And we're gonna like just, it's a very efficient way to sear everything. If you don't have a thermometer at home, it's okay. If you have scallion, an onion, anything with a little bit of moisture content, anything that's just like not water, um, throw it in. And if it bubbles, you're good to go. You need one of these bad boys and then you're gonna need like a, like a spoon or some sort of ladle or whatever. So you wanna be careful. Um, this tends to clump together. So when you put in the oil, you want to not drop it all in at once. You kinda wanna like spread it all out. We don't want to cook it too long. We're going to work in batches so everything evenly cooks. When I was a younger kid, I loved Jonto's chicken, right? See the other video. <clears throat> Link also below. 
And I, I, I wasn't a big fan of Kung Pao Chicken, but my grandpa loved Kung Pao Chicken. Like, that was his favorite thing of all time. But I didn't really get like the peanuts and stuff. You know, I was like, this is a weird flavor combination. Give me that sauce, give me that sugar. But my grandpa passed away a few years ago and he was like, actually my hero. And so I kind of went back to Kung Pao Chicken, tasting it. And it reminds me of like all these like, really great nostalgic memories. And because I'm older, my palate's a lot more developed. Uh, so, actually, Kung Pao Chicken's the move. You know, all the chilies, all the spices, and this dish is very technique focused, so you can get a lot of, like, wok hay. Um, you can taste all of that in this dish. If you order this dish at a Chinese American restaurant, you can tell, like, the caliber of the chef. So, this is one of the benchmarks for me. This is a good example of it clumping. And then you have the spoon because you can just kind of separate each individual piece like this. Beautiful, perfectly seared, like nice little crust forming, not too dark, right? It's got a little bit of color to it because we don't want to overcook our meat. Scallions, take the green part and we're gonna just cut it into maybe like one inch pieces, okay? And these scallion whites, all right? This is, this is the gold of scallions. And we're gonna cut these right in half like this. Make sure your knife is sharp. Cut them in thirds. And this is what we're gonna use for our dish. And this is what you're gonna use for the fried rice that you're gonna make with the leftover rice using your beautiful long grain rice. We have garlic. Now we're gonna slice these really thin. You guys ever seen like Godfather? How like they're in, a, they're in prison and then like they're slicing the garlic super thin so it melts in the sauce. Uh, we're not melting any sauce today, but we're gonna be slicing them super thin. What slicing them super thin does is they will caramelize faster. It will impart like a really nice, uh, slightly bitter garlic taste to the dish to kind of like round it all out. I like to use bitter in my cooking. I think it's, it's an extra depth of flavor and it's actually something my grandpa used to talk about all the time. Definitely fucking scallion. Definitely marrying garlic. Definitely killing ginger. Okay, all right, now we're done with the meat and plus, we're gonna go over there. <laughs> Start cooking. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna crank this wok super duper high. Uh, you wanna treat a wok kind of like a cast iron. So we're gonna add some oil and then we're gonna add our scallions in first. So scallions are one of, one of my favorite things to use because um, just seared scallions is such an amazing flavor. You see it all over like Asian cuisines, like scallion oil, this and that. We're gonna char these bad boys. We're gonna add these Tianjin chili peppers. And we're gonna break them in half, break them in half to release the seeds and all the flavor in the dish. And Tianjin chili peppers are really easy to find. Go to like any Asian supermarket and they'll have like a huge 20 pound bag of them. It's more than you ever need. Like, give them to your friends and neighbors. You know, you can kind of spread the, <coughs> ooh, that's spicy. Spread the religion of tinging chili peppers. We're gonna add the peanuts, okay? And add the peanuts to give it like a little roasted flavor. Chicken, bam, boom. We're gonna add our Shaoxing wine to deglaze. If you don't have Shaoxing wine at home, you can, Use any wine that you have that rhymes with Shaoxing wine. You're gonna wait for all the wine to evaporate and then you're gonna add a little bit of your soy sauce. Not too much because you wanna cook and caramelize your soy sauce. And what this step is going to do is if you do it correctly, it's going to really coat your uh, compound chicken and make it nice and dark with a really beautiful color. Next up, add in our hoisin. Uh, you'll notice there's like no slurry, no cornstarch to this dish <coughs> because the hoisin contains some flour. And that's gonna be like your binding agent. That's what's gonna thicken everything together. Add our garlic in. Now we add in the garlic a little later because this dish is so flavorful, so pungent. We want a little bit of that raw garlic flavor to it. It's real nice, really nice. Sugar. 
keep on stirring. If you don't stir, it's gonna be burnt, and then your friends and family won't love you anymore, and they won't want to eat your compound chicken. And then we're gonna add your vinegar at the end to kind of give it like a little glossy look. And obviously, we can't forget the MSG. Bam. That's it. That's what you're looking for. It was real quick. So nice and glossy. You got you got these nuts in there. You got some chilies. It smells so good. Time to plate. Oh yes. And after you tap it, it's perfectly like. Very easy to close. Now you can't have Kung Pao chicken without some really amazing long grain rice. Every rice cooker comes with this. Use it. You want to fluff up your rice. If you don't fluff up your rice, you're going to have like really dense grains and no one's going to be a fan of your rice. You're going to be, that's like very amateur hour, you know? Man, this rice is so good. So here we have our Kung Pao chicken, wok roasted peanuts, wok roasted tianjin chili peppers, beautifully velveted chicken thigh. Slivers of garlic. Let's taste it. Yo, boy. I don't talk to him. I don't fucking talk about. It's so good that shit in your mouth. It's so good. It's cheap below, man. Click it. This is fucking bomb.com. I'm ready. How many tries do we have? <laughs> oh my God, so it would have been so cool if I pulled it off. 